Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Mishnah Yomi. We are about to conclude Maseches Shvius, Maseches Shemitah. Tomorrow, not today. We'll be almost there. We're finishing a third, the third to last, and the penultimate Mishnah of Maseches Shvius. Mishnah Perak Yud, Mishnah Zayin. Kiveres Dvorim, Reb Lezer Omer Harik Karka. The Kosen La Prusbol, <clears throat> talking about a beehive. I'm not exactly sure why uh, the Mishnah talks about a beehive. Apparently, um, the Mepharshim say we're talking about a beehive that is sitting on the ground as opposed to uh, cemented to the ground. If it's cemented to the ground, everyone agrees, everyone agrees it's part of the karka, it's part of the, the ground, it's part of karkos. If it's standing on pegs or propped up, so then everyone agrees it's metalcelin. And if it's just lying on the ground, not attached to the ground, that's Machlokas and the Mishnah, Tin Rezer and the Chum, whether it's considered Karka or not. Um, and depending on whether you consider it Kark part of the ground or not, there'll be four or five Nafkaminas. So, like it says, Harei Karka, it is considered part of the ground, because they're not Prusbal, and therefore, like we mentioned in the previous Mishnayas, in order to write a Prusbal, it has to be that there's some reliance, some Achrayas on Karkos. Just like the ground is not makabel tuma, it also is makabel tuma. And if you take out the honey from it, or the honey comes from it on Shabbos, you're going to be chayiv. The Gemara in Shabbos says that taking out honey, you're taking out honey combs from a beehive on on Shabbos is part is considered tolish. That's considered to be like you're ripping off a branch or ripping off a fruit off a tree. Um, because it's part of the ground. Come say no, it's metal, it's not part of the ground unless it's cemented to the ground. Therefore you can't you can't rely uh, a prusbol on it lean the prusbol on this uh, considered carcos for that. It's macabal tuma because metal is not part of the carcass. And therefore the third nafkamina, if you take out the honey from it on Shabbos, it'd be potter. Mishnah Ches, someone who returns alone on Shvius. Now, you do not have to return alone on Shvius, right? And we learned, obviously, we also learned that the end of the seventh year, I meaning Rosh Hashanah, the eighth year, it's Meshamid, it cancels the loan. Uh, someone wants to return alone during Shvius. I'm going to learn the simple explanation, the simple words of the Mishnah over here. Um, I'll tell you what the Mepharshim say afterwards, and based on that, based on the discrepancy of what I'm saying and the Mepharshim, we're going to develop Ian with Ben Sio and the Yunan Mishnah, which really is a huge Kiddush and a whole Mishnah Shvita and Shvita Sktafim. He should say to him, he wants to return alone. He say, Yomer lo Mishami And he should say, Mishami literally means instead of extending out my hands, take the loan, say, I'm, I'm letting my hands drop. I'm not going to take the loan, the, the repayment of the loan from you. I'm lo Afal Pika and you compliment. And then he, you know, he's insistent. He says, you know what? No, I want, I really want to give you the loan. You could have been a cow from him. You only have to refuse him once. Shemar Vizet Dvar Shmita. It says Dvar, which is talking. We have to refuse him once, but it doesn't say Diburim, Dvar, one time, refuse him, not more than once. Kezabo, similar halacha, Rotsiach Shagol, you're a miklat, uh, a person who killed unintentionally, right? He has to go to your Mikla, talks about himself as Makos, um, in order to be protected from the from the Avengers, the family. He was an important person. He maybe was a big rabbi. They wanted to honor him, they wanted to give him. Shlishi on Shabbos in their shul. Yomar lahem roteyachani. He should say to them, "I'm a murderer. You shouldn't give me this, this honor, even though I killed unintentionally." Amrlo, afal pikein. Nonetheless, we don't care that you unintentionally killed someone. We want to give you this honor. Yikabel him, and you're allowed to accept the honor. Shneim of a zedvar roteyach. Again, it says the word dvar. You're supposed to speak to them, tell them I don't want the honor. If they insist, then you can take the honor. Uh, the Mepharshim explain how Machs Rechob is talking, but obviously it's not talking about during Shvius, because during Shvius, right, uh, Shvius only cancels the loan at the end. So they say that the, the Rav says, Beso Shvius, I know Mishmitasa, Shein Shvius, Mishmitasa, Mishmitasa, Besofa. It's talking about after the seventh year is over, even though the Mishnah says Machs Rechob during the seventh year, it really means the eighth year. During the eighth year, then you have to refuse it, right, because during the seventh year, the loan is not canceled. They're not canceled until the eighth, eighth year. So you could you could accept the loan technically during the seventh year, according to the Rav. And I believe it's Pharisee Israel says this also. Um, so in Ion Hamishnah, we're going to explain maybe the literal shot does make sense. And based on that, we're going to explain the Pasuk in the Torah and say, Yuj Chidushim, Ashbidas Ksafim. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned. Coming up next.